Hey everyone, happy Monday. I am um, just trying to figure out what to cook for dinner. Um, Friday I talked a little bit about some input that I had on the show. Um, again, I rewatch my own videos just to make sure that they don't skip. I can't really do anything about it when it's live, but if they if they skip um, during the video on the playback, then then I don't publish it or I'll take it down and redo it. Um, and I'm not finding any skips, so I'm really glad about that. Um, I'm also um, getting ready to start doing some contests and those will be um, something like if you know if I get 10 likes on a on a post and uh, then I will pull a name out of the hat and take that person to lunch and find out about their bookkeeping and um, see if there's anything I can do to help and if nothing else you got a free lunch right and that is of course only in the Salt Lake Salt Lake and Utah counties um, I don't even really have time to go up to, to Davis or Weber so Salt Lake or Utah counties. We're going to be having some giveaways coming up soon. Um, as soon as I figure out what what they are, <laughs> um, you know, you don't realize how tough the social marketing, social media marketing thing is till you try to do it, and then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, there's just so much information out there, and um, you never quite know, you know, what people want to hear is really what it comes down to. Um, Maybe not really what they want to hear, because I don't like to tell people just what they want to hear, but what they need to find out. Um, unfortunately, my teenage son and his friends just left. It's always really kind of nice. They're loud. Um, okay, so probably, possibly, I'm not sure, probably no show tomorrow. Tomorrow is my daughter's 16th birthday. And I will be taking her out to dinner, and uh, as you can imagine, that's a little bit more. That's one of those things that nobody can do for me, and, and that's important, but not urgent. And I want to, you know, sweet sixteen. I want to celebrate that. She's such a good girl. She, um, uh, she's such a good girl. I'm so, and and I think she's gotten her first job to go with that. So I'm excited. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, trying to think of a bookkeeping topic. It, it hit five o'clock and I wasn't quite ready for it yet. But let's talk a little bit about again why why do you even hire a bookkeeper? Um, I recently read an article on Inc. about um, it was about retail actually, and it was talking about how a lot of people don't shop retail anymore. Uh, a lot of people don't, they're buying experiences. They're not buying products as much anymore. I mean, to be honest, um, I have more clothes and, I, and I'm not, I'm middle class, you know. I have more clothes than I can wear. I can only buy maybe one more TV and then I'm out of space to put any TVs. Um, and I don't really want my kids having TVs in their rooms. Um, only so many computers that I can run. <laughs> There's only so much stuff that you can buy. Um, and right now, the two things that I that I really, really want to spend money on is I want to take my kids to Disneyland, and I want to get LASIK surgery because I'm sick and tired of contacts. And, and to make it even worse, at my age, not only do I need contacts, and I put my contacts in, and then I put my glasses on. So I would really love to get that fixed. And that's the kind of thing most people are looking at now. They're looking at improving their experiences because really when it comes down to it, experiences are, are, what, um, are what we take with us. Um, so I was really thinking about it and um, So, you know, what kind of businesses, what kind of 
services do people need if they are doing business with me? That's one of the things I was thinking about. And that's kind of important to know because if they're doing business with me, um, then, I, then I, there's just some things I know right away. If they're calling me and they um, need, need to get bookkeeping done or accounting done, then there's some things I know right away. Number one is they've hit a pain point. Um, something has happened in their lives that probably has put them into pain. Um, and they are now reaching out for a service that nobody likes. I mean, honestly, bookkeeping is like the dentistry of business. Nobody wants to go. Nobody wants to deal with it. Um, and it's got to be done. I kind of chuckle. Uh, my last office was next door to a dentist's office. And then I was just looking at an office that was next door to a dentist's office, and I was thinking, you know, coincidence? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, so, you know, some of the things that, if you're looking at bookkeeping or accounting, and I hope that you're doing it proactively. I hope you're not waiting until um, it's been seven years and you're getting notices from the IRS and you don't even know what, how to put together your tax forms and they're threatening to uh, seize your assets. And don't don't wait to that point. Um, bookkeeping is something that, and accounting too. I would really like to see people come at this much more proactively, so that they come at it from a position of, you know, I need to make better decisions for my business, and I don't have time or the desire to do the bookkeeping myself. That's a much better place to come from. Um, some of the things that I thought of that that people, and I'm really just kind of thinking out loud here. That, that people need by the time they hire a bookkeeper or an accountant. Um, one, the first thing is usually by the time they come to me, they just need to be in compliance. They need to get their taxes in order. Um, so that tells me right away they need a tax professional. They need an enrolled agent or a CPA or a tax preparer to help them get that taken care of. They may even need a business attorney. Hope not. But they may even need one, I mean, to help them decide um, what kind of business entity is right for them, whether they want it to be an LLC or a corp. Um, they may need banking advice. I have had people come to me, you know, and start to get started, and then they say, you know, what bank do I use? Um, and if anybody wants to know, the first one that I recommend is Chase. For business, I like to use the big, big banks because they offer... Um, amenities that small banks just don't, such as the online banking. They can, um, it's, it's easier for me as a bookkeeper if I can get view access to their accounts and then I can not harass my client at all and um, be able to provide them with the, the information that they need. And the less that I have to kind of pester my client about it, the happier I'm going to be. Um, they probably do need payroll. Um, kind of looking at this and it makes me look much bigger than I am because, oh well, <laughs> I'm kind of looking at this and I'm like, oh, I look absolutely obese. I'm not. I just happen to have, <clears throat> to be very well endowed. Um, but uh, they, they probably need payroll, or they're going to be needing payroll. Um, if they're looking for a bookkeeper or an accountant, they're going to need, they may need help getting their business set up. They may need to, to figure out how to file articles of corporation or articles of organization. Um, they may need merchant account services. Um, you know, so there's some things that kind of go with bookkeeping and accounting that, that people need. And, whether or not I provide all those things, I certainly want to be able to direct them to those things. Um, the emotional state people are in, oh, come on. People are in pain. <laughs> if they are um, looking for a bookkeeper or an accountant, they're in pain. I mean, there's just no getting around it. Something has happened. Um, like I said, we're like the dentist or the doctor. Um, nobody really wants to go to the doctor. They want to go to the dentist even less. So, um, 
you know, if they're calling us, we already know that they're in a position of pain. Um, the best I have ever seen is that they're confused. Um, I've seen some where they have their business is growing and they're doing really well or they're opening a new business and they, they know that they need to have an accountant, but they're really confused about what to do next. And it's a confusing field. I mean, there's, um, there's, everybody knows QuickBooks, but then there's Zero and FreshBooks and um, Intact and, um, and Intact is more for much larger organizations. There's Zoho Books. There's, and do I want it in the cloud as a, a software as a service, or do I want it on my desktop where I have more control over it? And so there's so many, and that's just the software, you know? There's so many variables that people really just shut down. They melt down. It's not something that's fun for most people. I'm a little bit weird. I'm, I own it. Um, and, and the other thing that I think most people are when they start looking for a bookkeeper is they are overwhelmed. Um, I remember going and talking to a client once and they had piles of stuff, I swear, this high on their desk and they really just shoveled it all into a banker's box and handed it over to us. Um, another place was um, a restaurant and they filled Walmart bags full. I mean, and they were heavy. I couldn't even carry these things and I'm, I am not a weakling. Um, they were just, just get this away from me because it's just overwhelming. And if you don't take care of bookkeeping or accounting right away, then it piles up. And it's a lot harder to deal with as it piles up than it is when you're just, um, I really hate the way this camera sits sometimes. Um, it's a lot harder to deal with after it's piled up. Then it just becomes overwhelming. Then you kind of melt down and then you don't even want to deal with it at all. Then you get the letters from the IRS. So you can kind of take the spiral and you can take it upwards. You can start off right off the bat and say one of the things that I know as a, as a business owner is that I'm going to need bookkeeping and accounting done. Rather outsource it um, and uh, find a place that's, that's got low prices. Um, I start at $24.95 a week. Folks, if you can't afford $24.95 a week to take care of your business books, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but find a place that will do that and will work with you. And then get that off of your plate. And then you don't have to go into pain. And then you can go into to get your your loans and your lines of credit and say, here are my financials. They're already done. Then you call your uh, tax professional in the second week of January and say, here are my books. And they go from being, you know, you go from being the client that, that they kind of go, oh, when the phone rings to, oh, oh, they are, they are, they've got it together. Um, kind of some of the reason I'm talking about this, again, last week I talked a little bit about client engagement, and that is really, it is the, the weak link in any bookkeeping or accounting um, practice. I've talked to several accountants that have said that, you know, it, their clients will go three, four, six, eight, twelve months without even talking to them, and then they get what I call the April Fool's box, and that is the box, the banker's box full of statements and receipts and, you know, who knows what. And they go, you know, here, I need this done by April 15th. April Fool! <laughs> and nobody likes that. Nobody. Um, in fact, it, you know, by April 1st, we're, you know, if, if the tax preparers, if they're on top of it, are filing extensions already because they can't, there's just so much we can do. Um, we leverage our time as much as we can, but there's only there's only so many hours a day. There's only so much we can do. Um, what I would really like to do, to do, and if you're watching this, if you could comment below, what problem are we really solving for you? It's not bookkeeping. It's not accounting. 
I don't think it's even that big pile of receipts on your desk that we're going to take away. And that's something I'm thinking about. Um, I would like to see all of my clients, I would really like to see everybody that starts a business start off with a bookkeeper, at least a bookkeeper. And I've talked before about the different um, specializations in the accounting field. Bookkeepers do the day-to-day -day kind of grunt work. We're the ones that make sure that all the transactions are in, um, that they're classified correctly, uh, that invoices go out, and payments come in. We help you with that. We make sure that you know how much it costs you to do each job um, and if you are profitable within each job. That's called job costing and I need to do a video on that too. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Um, we just kind of make sure that everything on the back end runs smoothly and people forget about it until they realize they've done you know, a bunch of work and they're not getting paid for it or until the IRS comes knocking. Now again, I don't do taxes. I don't want to do taxes. I don't enjoy doing taxes. I do enjoy doing this kind of work, this kind of um, making sure that the books are in order all year long. Um, it gives me a really, really strong sense of satisfaction. I swear I can talk. It gives me a very strong sense of satisfaction to see um, books balance down to the penny every time, and it makes me feel good. I mean, I'm a little bit OCD. <laughs> um, my parents probably won't believe that, but I really am a bit OCD. I like to see things just so, and that's one of the things that drew me into the fields that I've worked in. Um, one is computer science. That's what I went to college for. I didn't finish the degree, but I did go to college for it. One of the things I liked about it was that everything had to be just exactly so or the or it wouldn't compile back in the days when we actually had to compile a program to make it run. If it has to be exactly perfect or it won't work. Accounting is the same way. It has to be exactly perfect or it's just not right. And I like for things to be just so. Um, really gives me a sense of satisfaction. Now, not everybody gets that. And just because you enjoy doing your own books doesn't mean that you're going to be a good bookkeeper for multiple firms. Um, I kind of laugh. My books, I have to actually put it on the schedule when I'm going to do my books because I worry more about my clients. Um, you know, I like to see them doing well. I like to see them growing. And I like to to get in once a week and make sure their stuff is just so. Um, some of the... But in order to do that, let me kind of back up and go back to what I was talking about. As the client, we need to have you corresponding with us and communicating with us. And it really shocks me how many people will say, here are my books, you do them, don't bother me anymore. And we're kind of left going, um, well, I can put all the information in, but I'm going to tell you at the gate, if that's your attitude, they won't be right. They just won't. If, if your belief is that the bookkeeper should just somehow magically know what certain checks are for, there's a lot we can figure out. There's a lot we do know. And then there are some things that we just can't do without input from the client. And it really, really, truly has shocked me how many clients have said, word for word, they said this, you're the expert. You figure it out. When it would have taken you third, taken them seconds to say, oh, oh yeah, he mowed my lawn. Oh yeah, he washed the windows. Um, client engagement. I just can't even talk enough about client engagement. It is so important. So um, make sure that if your bookkeeper is asking for information, I promise you she's not trying to be nosy. I promise you she doesn't even care. There's, you know, there's always that handful of clients we kind of roll our eyes at because they're, they're doing things that are so egregiously wrong and sometimes even illegal, and they want us to go along with it. And so, you know, they do kind of become memorable that way, but 
for the most part, you know, unless you are doing something so egregiously out of line and wrong <laughs> that it does stick in our minds, most of the time we don't even think about what you're doing with your money. It's not something that, other than to give you advice on, well, maybe you don't want to buy lunch for your entire shop every day because you're overspending, other than giving you advice like that, it's your business. You can run it however you want. Um, we just want to make sure that everything's recorded correctly. And I promise you, we cannot do that without at least some input from you. Um, if we're using bank feeds, and there's a lot of software now that is using bank feeds, which means we have to put in a username and a password, and it pulls the information from the bank. It doesn't move any money around. It's like a view only. and. Um, if we're using bank feeds and they break, these are it's the internet. Everything breaks eventually, sometimes, at least once in a while. And with bank feeds, sometimes they want a security question after so many months, or they want you know, to double check and make sure that it's really you, or they want to change the password after so long. Um, things just happen with the banks, and if the bank feed fails for any reason, we may need to get a hold of you to find out, to, you know, to get more information, to get security questions answered, to get, um, you know, to make sure that it's set up so that we can take care of our, to take, so that we can take care of you. I promise I can talk. I promise. I swear. <laughs> it's Monday. I'm so sorry, folks. Um, it's just really important. And I'm really going to hammer this. This is one of the most important. This is one of the biggest problems, biggest challenges. Excuse me. I don't have problems. I have challenges. They're the biggest problems that I face as a bookkeeper. The biggest challenge is to get the customer or the client engaged in the process to the point that they at least answer my questions. And without at least that much engagement, I can't do my job. Can you imagine going into work and uh, being told that you need to build a house but you're not allowed to have a hammer or a saw or a measuring tape? Or a nail gun? And then they say, well, you figure it out. It makes it kind of tough. It's probably not impossible. You might be able to figure out, you know, lengths this way. Um, you might be able to, to figure out alternatives, but it makes your job much harder. I mean, if I didn't have a hammer, I have been known to use a rock. <laughs> But, you know, it just makes it just that much harder. Why would you want to do that to a bookkeeper that you're paying good money to? You want to make that job as easy for her as possible. Because she's, she wants to do a good job for you. I promise you that. Um, I would really like to know what your feedback is on this. Why is it that customers completely disengage from their books? Why why would a customer or a client rather not talk to their bookkeeper for months on end when the bookkeeper is reaching out to them? Um, please comment below and I would love to hear from you. I'm going to talk about job costing tomorrow I think and explain what that is and why it can be important. Not all clients need it, but the ones that need it really really need it. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Happy month. No, I won't. I, I don't know if I will or not. It's going to depend on her schedule. Um, tomorrow's my daughter's birthday, and so I may or may not be on here. I will let you know. Have a wonderful one month. I swear I can talk. I speak four languages. You would think I can at least speak my birth language. Have a wonderful Monday, and I will talk to you again.